Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on cis loop ligand gated ion channels. In this video, what we're going to talk about is uh, something known as the glue CL channel. Okay, uh, and we're also going to talk about uh, the mechanism of action of the drug ivernectin. So we'll start with what the glue CL channel is, and then we'll come on to the drug ivermectin. Sorry about that, I said ivernectin at the start. Ivermectin. Okay, so ivermectin is an anti-helminthic drug uh, which kills parasitic worms, and it's used mainly in humans uh, to treat uh, onchocerciasis uh, and also, um, also um, head lice and things like that. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll start with what the glucial channel is. So we'll go through the structure of the glucial channel, um, and then we'll talk about opening of the uh, glucial channel and the gating of it. Um, and then what we'll move on to is how the drug ivermectin sorry, um, uh, affects this channel, and that actually what it's going to do is cause it to open, and how this can be used to treat uh, onchocerciasis. Right, okay, so let's start off with the structure of the glucial channel, but before we do, let's just talk about what um, species they actually found a glucial one in. Sorry, glucial, the glucial channel in. So they found it in a species of worm, okay, known as Cenorhabditis elegans. So here is our worm, and this is a type of worm known as Cenorhabditis elegans. And uh, these worms are a type of nematode, so Encenorhabditis elegans, which is often just abbreviated to C. elegans. So you'll often see Encenorhabditis elegans abbreviated to C. elegans. Okay, and uh, these worms are a type of nematode. So that means that they are a round worm as opposed to a flat worm. So the other types of worms, such as trematode and cestodes, they are both flat uh, worms. So this is a round worm, okay? And these little guys are usually around one millimeter in length, so they can reach up to one millimeter in length. Right, so uh, the gluciel channel. Uh, which is actually a type of cis-loop ligand-gated iron channel, is found in these uh, worms, basically. It was initially found in Cenorhabditis elegans worms. Okay, but it has since been found in a bunch of other worms as well, and also arthropods, such as head lice. Okay, so without further ado, let's actually discuss the structure of this channel and see why it is an example of a cis-loop ligand-gated ion channel. Okay, so let's discuss the structure of it here. So let's say this is our glucial channel here, sitting in the s in a cell membrane of a cell of our Cenorhabditis elegans worm. And I want to stress that this is a metazoa. It's made up of multiple cells. It's not just one cell. It's not some protozoan worm. It's a um, it's a metazoa. It's a big creature, an animal in its own right, so it's got many different cells, okay? Uh, so, um, in one of the cells of this uh, Cenorhabditis elegans, you may well have this glucial channel, and indeed it's often found in nerve cells. Right, so here it is. So, it's not just made up of one protein, the glucial channel is actually made up of multiple proteins. It's made up of five separate proteins all stuck together. One there, here's the second one, the third one, and the fourth one. So it's a pentamer basically. It's got five separate proteins making up the entire channel. So this is the entire channel. This is the glucial channel. But as we can see, it's a pentamer and it's actually what we would call the homopentema. So all of the um, five proteins which come together to make the glucial channel are utterly identical. Right, so let's now pull out one of these glucial receptor subunits here. Okay, so we'll pull just one of these fifths of the glucial channel out of the channel and have a look at its structure. Okay, so here is the phospholipid bilayer here, 
and the structure of this protein is a cis loop ligand gated ion channel structure. So what you have is here's the amino terminus of the protein, then you have this cis loop, which is the structure after which uh, cis loop ligand gated ion channels are named. So here's our cis loop, and then we have our transmembrane regions. So we have our M1, M2, M3, and then finally M4. Okay. So here's the carboxyl terminus of the uh, receptor subunit. So this is a subunit of our receptor. So a subunit of the glucial channel. Okay. Um, and I should just say, actually, uh, that uh, glucial stands for the glutamate-gated chloride channel. And this is actually a chloride channel that is gated by glutamate, funnily enough. So... Um, glutamate-gated chloride channel, and we'll see this more later on. Glutamate-gated chloride channel. So glutamate will bind to uh, this receptor, this glucial channel, and cause it to open, and that will allow chloride anions to move into the cell. So this is odd, because we haven't seen any cis loop ligand gated ion channels so far, which were uh, gated by glutamate and we haven't seen any glutamate receptors either that are gated by, uh, sorry, that allow chlorine in. So this is an odd uh, receptor. It's an inhibitory receptor to glutamate. And in uh, vertebrates, in humans, for instance, there aren't any inhibitory uh, receptors to glutamate, or at least not any ligand-gated ion channels which are inhibitory uh, receptors for glutamate. Okay, there are some metabotropic glutamate receptors which will have the effect of inhibiting uh, the um, uh, postsynaptic cell. Okay, right. So uh, the glucial channel is a cis loop ligand gated ion channel. And the reason it's a cis loop ligand gated ion channel is that it forms these homopentamers of five of these glucial proteins. So this is a glucial channel subunit, basically, or a glucial protein. And each of these glucial proteins has one of these extracellular cis loops here. So this is a cis loop. So let me just explain to you uh, what a cis loop is, since this channel's whole name as, as a cis loop ligand gated ion channel is based on this structure. So let's just discuss what this structure actually is. So basically, it's a kink like so in the protein structure in the polypeptide. So, what you'll have is, if this represents the polypeptide, what you'll have is a f the first cysteine residue will be here. So here's the amino terminus of the first cysteine residue. Uh, so I should just say that the cis loop is just a loop in the polypeptide structure which is held together by a disulfide bridge between two uh, cysteine amino acids on uh, the two opposing strands. So on this strand here, there'll be a cysteine amino acid, and on this strand here, there'll be a cysteine amino acid. And the two of those cysteine amino acids will form a disulfide bond together which will hold together the two opposing strands. So, if this is this first strand, so let me colour it in. So let's say this strand up here will have in green, or in turquoise, then this is this strand here. So you'll then have your cysteine amino acid uh, in this strand. So here is the amino terminus of this cysteine amino acid. Here's the alpha carbon with the hydrogen off. And the R group of the cysteine amino acid is that you have this methylene group, and then you would have a file group of a normal cysteine amino acid. But this file group is going to have taken part in the disulfide bridge, so it will have lost its hydrogen. Okay? Then let's have here the carboxylic acid group of our uh, cysteine amino acid. And then what happens is the loop comes round. So now we're just drawing a line to represent the polypeptide so that I don't have to draw out each and every amino acid. But this is the continuation of the polymer of amino acids. Okay, then here is the amino terminus. Okay, and then you have another cysteine amino acid here. Okay, so here's the alpha carbon. And then we've got the other cysteine amino acids, actual R group here. And that's the disulfide bond between the two sulfur atoms on the R groups of the cysteines. And then all off this alpha carbon, you'll then have the carboxylic acid group. 
and it goes around like that. So this is the structure of a cis loop within a protein. Okay, so you have this loop in the polypeptide structure which is held together by this disulfide bond uh, between two cysteine amino acids on the opposing strands of the um, loop. Okay, so this is a di sulfide bond, or a disulfide bridge, you'll also hear these referred to as, so bond slash bridge. Okay, right, so uh, now uh, that we've discussed what that is, we now understand why these are called cis-loop ligand-gated ion channels. So now let's discuss a little bit more about how, um, how these five um, cis-loop ligand-gated ion channel receptor subunits are going to assemble into a pentamer and the actual structure of these within the entire uh, structure of the channel. Okay, but we'll do that in the next video.